Welcome back to Boiler House Garage. In this video you join me at a Shell service station filling up with a tank full of their V power that will run through the car to flush out the remaining litre or two of Texaco E10. I also need to make a note of how much I've refuelled by to work out the miles per gallon figure for that fuel. You may remember in the previous video I had tested Texaco E10 and prior to that I refuelled with Jet E10 to clear any of the V power that I normally use from the fuel tank. Both of these fuels we found out to be at 6% ethanol, making them technically E6 despite the E10 label. And I mentioned that I'll be doing a mileage comparison between these uh, so-called E10 fuels versus Shell V power that I regularly test to show that it's ethanol free. I did intend to compare the price differences against the mileage to see if the cheaper price of E10 is actually a false economy or not. However, in the few months that I conducted these tests, the fuel prices have been up and down like a horse draws, but I will take an average since the prices dipped a little by the time I filled my last tank of V-Power. This garage even done away with their price mask, but I kept the receipts to see how much I've paid for each one. To work out the MPG, or miles per gallon, we'll take this refuel as an example. I have covered 378.6 miles and filled 49.04 litres that we need to convert into gallons. To do this we divide the litre amount by 4.55 as there's 4.55 litres in an imperial gallon. In the US their cars seem uh, less fuel efficient than ours as the US gallon has only 4.2 litres so they're actually getting better miles per gallon than it seems if you're used to hearing mileage in the British imperial gallon. To the nearest two decimal places, this 49.04 litres is 10.78 gallons, which you divide the mileage by. So 378.6 miles divided by 10.78 gallons equals 35.2 miles per gallon. That was my second tank of Texaco 6% ethanol blended E10 on a normal driving cycle and I only ran the air conditioning for two hours total for all of those miles at an average outside temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. The earlier tank was a bit more of an economical driving style with no air conditioning used the entire time and the average temperature outside was 24 degrees. Uh, that achieved 37.8 miles per gallon. Once I'd run a whole tank of V-Power through the car to limit any remaining ethanol blended fuel, I conducted the same tests with two more tanks of V-Power. On the economical driving style, I achieved 41.9 mpg, and that was with an hour's use of the air conditioner, and the average outside temperature was 24 degrees. On the normal driving tank, we got 39.4 miles per gallon, and an average outside temperature of 27 degrees. But as these were consistently warmer days, the AC was run for 5 hours total as some of my commutes were getting unbearably warm. Even with more use of the air conditioning, the V-Power performed better than I expected. If we take an average of the two results from each fuel, the 6% E10 did 36.5 mpg and the V-Power did 40.7 mpg. The average price of these were £1.90 per litre and £2.2p two per litre, which is £8.64 and £9.19 per gallon respectively. If my appalling math skills serve me correctly, that's 24p per mile on the E10 and 23p per mile on the V-Power. This does give us an idea that using V-Power, and we can assume all ethanol free fuel, is more cost effective than a 6% blended E10 especially when you consider that we may see more ethanol added in the future to give us true 10% E10 uh, and I could have achieved more mileage from the V-Power if the weather wasn't so hot. However take this with a pinch of salt as the price fluctuations means this could change even on a daily basis and perhaps the Fiesta ST that I ran these tests on performs better overall on super unleaded fuel. I'd like to run this test again in something like a some three cylinder eco box and perhaps try the 7% Breeze Harvest Petrol against, uh, let's say, SU Supreme uh, next time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to comment any questions, criticisms, and perhaps even your own findings. I've also used these two petrol types to soak different car components in for a few months, to show how ethanol degrades your fuel system, so that will be a video in the very near future. 
I'm also waiting on an Octane tester, so as well as ethanol content, I can expand this series to see if the 97, 98 and 99 Plus brands are as advertised. I've also thought about offering a testing service, uh, so if you suspect a local station to be passing off an inferior petrol as a Supreme brand, uh, I'll be able to test to see if it contains ethanol and if not, what octane it is. Until then, thanks very much for watching.